unappreciated. But women are freaked out by it, you know, and it moves women on such a deep level. All kinds of women from all different walks of life. By teaching them how to control their bodies, they were able then to take control of their personal space and their world and their life. We're changing how we feel about ourselves, how we think, how we breathe, how we move. And you know what? These women go home and their chins are high. We need more feminine energy in this world. There is a lot of fear out there, a lot of fear of the unknown when it comes to Middle Eastern culture. The everyday uh, making a living of it can be pretty strenuous. I don't want anyone's wife to feel bad about what I'm doing. In our society, in our culture, we interpret anything with the body as being sexual. And I, I think it's a, it's a deeper topic. The human body moving well is beautiful. Remember, at the end of the day, we're putting something out to the public and we're hoping they walk out going, what a great show, I'm glad I came, I'm gonna tell all my friends. And at the same time, if now it's more respectable, and people go, you know, it isn't something that happens in the restaurants and people throw money to it. This is actually something one can respect, then hey, everybody's won. Right? that we formed five years ago, which is a record company, mostly world music, and, and now it's heavily influenced on Middle Eastern music. Music had morphed as, as rock and roll has. It's, 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 it's advanced and it's absorbed, and it has become a really strong creative force. Miles, he managed the biggest and most successful band of the 80s, The Police. If you got a contract, you know that there's no filming on me, buddy. You know, early on, he's uh, as a kid, because I'm he's a lot older than me. And by the time my eyes blinked open, he'd already decided he was not a musician. He was a purveyor of music, uh, infected by the stuff. But somewhere along the line, figured out he couldn't make it himself, but he could sure package it. And he, so even when I was a kid in high school, he, he ran the light show. He created the most, you know, one of the most successful independent record labels ever, IRS, which is home to R.E.M., The Go-Go's, Fine Young Cannibals, um, The Cramps, The Buzzcocks, all these bands that no one would touch at the time. The challenge is always to take something that's a bit new and bring it to the marketplace when the marketplace has no real avenues for you to enter. I had the same problem when I was working with the police and the punk rock bands in the early days where people, there were no radio stations that played punk rock other than little college stations. So there were avenues, but they were all kind of tiny. And then from that Middle East music, we've, we're now evolving that to these different aspects of that music and that's one of the reasons why we're doing this belly dance. So if I can use the music to create visual properties. If we have Jelena's instructional video, that would be great. Uh, documentaries, DVDs, whatever. And I can sell tickets then we really have something as a business, because we have to change as a business. The old business that we used to have of selling CDs, that's really going before our eyes. So I'm morphing the company into being an entertainment company, where we're, we're providing entertainment, and we have to reach the mainstream. The spin-offs of something like this are gonna be, you know, Desert Rose perfume, nice. belt scarf, you, you know, you have your jeans and you throw these on. They sell for $40, you know. That he can print whatever we want on here. Kind of took the analogy of river dance, where they took Irish music and Irish dance, and that really seemed to work. And I noticed that sales of Irish music really increased after River Dance. So you thought, hmm, interesting. The, the plan 
plan is to find 12 girls who will be the basis of a, of a show featuring uh, Arab dance and Arab music. You know, the thing about the show is Arabic music is a very, very infectious and uplifting music. But it's not necessarily something that you could go to an American audience and say, come and see an Arab music show, particularly in the climate that we're in right now. Miles grew up in the Middle East. His father was with the OSS, which is the precursor to the CIA. His father is very, very famous and very well respected. And, and known, as far as I know, for being an out-of-the-box thinker. There's a lot more interest in Arabic music, but there's always the question mark of, you know, is it something that we should be listening to or not? The, you add the dance to it, and all of a sudden it becomes something that's more acceptable because now it's a show. We think we can end up with something that will be a great show, which will help promote the music. And in, all, in, in some ways, too, with all this stuff going on politically, it might actually act as a bridge between the cultures to show that there's something, you know, inherent in every culture that's good. We always focused a lot on trying to reach people overseas. Obviously, the last couple of years, there's been a, a huge focus on the Middle East. There was some very limited thinking ideas about taking U.S. or Western artists to that part of the world as a sort of a goodwill gesture. One of the most interesting things Miles said to me, which I hadn't heard from anybody else, the United States government, particularly with young people, can't go into a country and just talk about themselves. And there is some extraordinary music and dancing and other entertainment media from the Arab world that is extraordinary. And he says, if you all can find ways to demonstrate that the United States has respect and appreciation for what they're doing and things that are important to them, you'll go along for a lot further. And that was significantly more sophisticated than what we were doing. A festival like this, like Rakasam, exists in the United States. So that I'm able to share and inspire a renewed interest in the beauty and the sophistication of my culture, the Arabic culture. The correct name is Oriental Dance. In Arabic, it's called Rak Shari. Rak means dance, Shari means oriental or east. Unfortunately, it's even called belly dancing, because it's like calling flamenco dancing feet dancing, or ass shaking, you know, belly dancing. There's a lot more going on than the belly, you know. The misnomer belly dance, that came from a man named Saul Bloom in 1893 at the World's Fair in Chicago. Ask Granddad if he remembers the midway at the Chicago World's Fair in 93. Here's the girl who made it famous with her spangles and her smile. He needed to make sure that they made a profit and nobody was coming to see the ethnic dances. In 1893, you didn't even dare say arm or leg, you said limb. So to say belly was like, <gasps> In New York, in the mainstream dance circles, the belly dance word is a bad word. Maybe it is better to just use the belly dance word, have them come there and be blown away by what is possible and belly dancing with the you belly know, dance So word. reclaim that word so it is okay. Have you, did you send out all the, to all the belly dance sites? We've informed them. I mean, what have we done with the actual infrastructure of the belly dance world? I've, uh, I've sent out the press release to the community in general and then I have a list of 
about seven or eight hundred email addresses. Just right, is that some of this stuff here? This yeah, which which those would be more more um, people that actually submit videos. You know, I'm also contacting some of the top teachers to say who have you got? You know, who can you recommend? My name is Tamalyn Dalal. I am a professional belly dancer. Wanna, 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 wanna. You know, we're building this, uh, looking to build a troop. We'll be doing a tour across America, okay? But we need 12 girls, only the Desert Roses. You know, I did the single with, with Sting and Chef Mami, which was uh, called Desert Rose, and that sort of popularized the kind of Middle Eastern music. We're sort of evolving the idea. We may be superstars of Bella Dance featuring the Desert Roses. Okay. So we'd have maybe the key people like Tamalyn and, yeah. and uh, Amar. Um, you know, Amar and all that, who would be, you know, really star dancers. But the troupe would be the 12 beautiful girls. And of course, 12, it's 12 roses. It's okay. 12, you know, for the calendar. We'd have a calendar. We'd have all that kind of stuff. So the 12 is the number we're looking for. Oh, is this we'd, for sure? Or are you just... No, we're doing it. We're doing okay. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. But we're not, we don't know who the 12 girls are yet. That's we've it. got, we've got oh. two in Los Angeles. So got, I may not be one of the 12 girls. Are, are you just traveling? <laughs> no, we, we, you may not be. If we find if somebody we find, better than me, yeah, exactly. Okay. But the main thing is, is that I want to put you on the list. Okay. Um, and um, just make sure you're, you're you'd be up for it. Uh, and as long as you're okay, then yeah. we're sort of done. Yeah, that's nice. And so you'll be hearing. So all you have to do is practice. Just practice. Yeah. What happened was there was this big upsurge in popularity. It became a fad. This, how to make your husband a sultan, how to dance for your husband malarkey. And fortunately, when that passed, the people who stayed saw that there was a lot more to it. They wanted to know more. The dance became popular in little enclaves in a lot of different cities and places in America. They grew and put out other little tentacles that grew. Every year that I had this studio, it got better and better. Then the singer, Shakira, she came out and she added some belly dancing to her routine. And that made it into the pop culture down here and also in South America. Then there was a television show. It was a, like a soap opera from Brazil. It was called El Clon. And people had clone mania. The main character was a belly dancer. I had to break down walls just to accommodate all the people that were coming from after watching that TV show. They come from every country. They come from all economic and social backgrounds. And the classes are full, you know, even with all this going on politically and economically, those classes are still full. They see something that they would like to emulate. They, they feel something that they would like to feel. And they don't know why they feel that way in this class, and they don't know what is being awakened, but they feel that something is being awakened. I just turned 90. And they asked me, what do you do? What, do you, what is your secret? That says, keep moving. These women, some of them don't even start dancing till they're 50. Some of them have been told their whole life that they were ugly or too fat or too this or that. And wow, belly dancing gave them a whole new sense of self. I teach a, 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 about six different types of shimmies. The women who are too, too thin, you can't see it on them. And they're complaining in class, I want to see my shimmy, I want to see my shimmy. And I'm like, eat more cake, you know, thin is out. We will change the body image of women, one woman at a time in this class. When 
women start belly dancing, they do feel empowered. And my husband says, I've caused more divorces than any one woman he's ever seen. If my husband were to tell me I couldn't do it, he'd have to leave. I, I try not to discourage her, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it does, uh, it does wear on you some, you know, once in a while. I've had the opportunity um, as, a, as a belly dancer to travel in the U.S. teaching. And the last place I was uh, was Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I've been all around now, and I have come to realize that pretty much every city has a belly dancing community. Uh, I guess it's just a really female art. Wherever there's women, there seems to be belly dancing. And Puerto Rico is one of the places that m most people enjoy Arab music and belly dancing in the world. Hey, thank you. here in, uh, on the stage in uh, Puerto Rico, in San Juan, where we've just seen 80 girls dancing uh, from uh, the Arabian fantasy school here. It's been growing, it's been growing, it's been growing every year, more and more and more and more and more belly dancers. I have a class right now of basic and basic intermediate. And, uh, by 12.30, we'll, start, uh, we'll be starting the class. Later on, you will see some of the dancers of the Arabian Fantasy Musical Review. This is an audition that uh, Mr. Mal Copeland is going to have today. One of the things I, had, I hadn't really thought about at the, at the time would be, suppose a whole bunch of them are 5 feet 8, and then along comes one of them that's really good who's 5 feet 2. It's going to look weird. I got to see who I'm dealing with because there were two girls we saw in Puerto Rico who were tall ish but fantastic looking. Yeah, this one is the girls that I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello, what's your name? Lorena. Lorena. How are you? Nice to meet you, Lorena. Nice to meet you. And your name is? Caron. 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 My concern is with Miles and the other men in the office is that it doesn't turn into a beautiful woman parading around, dancing half-naked on a stage. Uh, well, in their case, I was more impressed with their look. I didn't really get a chance to get into the, the depth of their dance, but they definitely looked good and would, would be perfect. Belly dancing originated as a woman's art form, and it was danced among women for other women, and many people say it started as a childbirth ritual or as childbirth preparation. You know, within families, it's a dance that women passed on to women, mothers passed on to daughters. You know, once that got to the stage, that kind of created the problem. Of the more oppressive societies, um, it is okay to see the dancer on stage because it becomes the other. So she's no longer this, you know, organic, homegrown dancer dancing in the living room at the parties. Um, she becomes something separate. And so it's something that they both admire um, and chastise. The American film, you know, Hollywood went to the Middle East and saw this and glamorized it. And, you know, Hollywood iced it. And so that kind of created um, just a whole new genre, a whole new venue, a whole new level of, of entertainment. Yes, bravo, little belly dancer, but don't come into my family. You're the belly dancer. Bravo, little belly dancer. Oh, you're just a great belly dancer. Cute, nice costume, but you know your place, and you're just the belly dancer. Bravo, but don't ever think of marrying my son. <laughs> Shusha! <laughs> Oh 
Well, my family doesn't speak to me. My Persian family doesn't speak to me because I became a belly dancer. The first awareness of it was knowing that my father forbade my mother to dance. And he told my mother that he would break both of her legs if she ever stepped foot into a nightclub ever again, because my mother was a belly dancer. And that's how they met. And he was a drummer. But then it's different when you marry the belly dancer. And he said to me, I don't want you to play finger cymbals in the house. I don't want you to play Arabic music in the house. You know, just slowly. And then, so, and then he said, if you go to the clubs, I'll break your legs. So that was a good one. Eventually, um, I just became subdued. The producers are all men, the club owners are all men, the band is all men, the waiters are all men. The last thing I want to do is to please a man. I'm not dancing for men. Well, I know it's confusing and, and I know it's very empowering for women. If there's a culture that wants to silence women and, and take their power away, that's going to be very threatening because the dance does everything that could be beautiful and empowering for a woman. Here's the best part of this country, is that we don't connect belly dancing to the culture of the Middle East. This is great. I mean, you know, we see a pretty girl in a skimpy costume that can't have anything to do with the Middle East. The Middle East is this depressing, repressed place. So somehow, uh, belly dance has become the mascot for freedom in the Middle East. And the dancers that are from the Middle East and are in the Middle East and are dancing, they are considered like prostitutes. So taking a prostitute and putting them on a poster as a symbol of freedom would not be their idea of good representation for their culture. I believe it was Amani, a Lebanese dancer, um, said about American belly dancers, she said you're taking good care of our art form. So it is transforming now into also an American art. It's not, it's no longer just a Middle Eastern art form. It is definitely American uh, belly dance also. There's oppressed women everywhere. In Miami Beach, you'll see a lot of women just dressing just to attract a man and get mutilating their bodies with plastic surgery, all kinds of surgeries. And so much of our oppression comes from ourselves. I think belly dancing helps us be proud of ourselves and want to be a little bit more than what we've been taught to be. There's a lot more to belly dancing for, for new dancers than just being in a dance class and learning the steps and putting on a costume. It's like, what do you do when you're out there and how do you deal with your audience? How to get them involved, how to choose the right music, to choose the right costumes for different venues. It should be interesting how I get through five shows tonight. Unfortunately, I threw my back out. Uh, we are going to the Sierra B and they was uh, 600 bucks. Please join me in welcoming Arcadia Chinese Vice Club officers. My God, what happened? You guys just uh, back here eating cakes and donuts already? If we need more volume, we'll give you a thumbs up. Or are you guys running on time and everything? I'm not sure. Is the dance floor clear? Uh, what time is it? No, no, now I'm getting worried. Could you stay here 30 more minutes with pay you $50? We cannot, because I have already five shows booked. I already have contract and deposit so, taken. Two. Oh, she okay, was like okay. five minutes. I'm like, no, if we don't go on right now, we're leaving. Okay, okay. Did you get paid yet? No, I can't find a guy. That's us! That's us! That's us! I went to Eastern Kentucky and danced for a coal miner. Uh, I got a $200 tip. 
he paid me 400 to come down there, which is a lot of money. He filled my car with gas. He offered to put me in a hotel for the night if I wanted to stay out. It's not too hard to drive back. This is like, I think it's, this is part of Hollywood. It's called Little Armenia. The bride, the girl who's getting engaged, hired me because it's her mother's birthday. So of course I want to invite the mother out to dance. There are many places where dance is not only permitted, it's expected. For certain festive occasions, especially weddings, the bride's mother is required to dance. pretty fun. Typical Russian-Armenian party. Lots of money flying around and lots of big jolly people. <laughs> I've danced in Kroger's in the meat department <laughs> and I went and danced for a vet one time and he was uh, operating on a dog and they took me right into surgery. It's 10.22. I have to be on stage there at 10.30 and we're about 25 minutes away. <laughs> freaking out and just getting tired because I literally run off the stage of Bibos. I run down the hallway running to the car because I have to prepare for the next show here because there's a lot of choreography involved where I dance with the group. I danced for one party one night and did not know it was supposed to be a bachelor party. Went in, they were all bachelors. But I had a little clue in the back of my mind something wasn't quite right, and my son was behind me. So that took care of that. It's hard to do by yourself. Like, I have ideas, and you know, and I, and I, I pay for everything in my company. I, I buy all the costumes. I do uh, about 80% of the choreography for the show train the dancers and you know, edit the music, burn the CDs. I just need, you know, I just need a great venue. That's what I feel like is missing in this, is a great venue to really express this dance and express what we're trying to do. With Miles Copeland, like he has a vision about doing something like that, bringing belly dancing to like another level. Kind of like a Las Vegas show, like a big production show. And, and this dance is open to, to women of all ages and all sizes and all shapes and a lot of women do it and we have a lot of uh, festivals and we have a lot of different events that we get together and we perform for each other and we have classes and seminars and, and it's a great opportunity for, for dancers to, to do things and get involved. But for what Miles wants, it's, it's, it's something, you know, more like show business. Because so, so Hala says you're you're top of the line of her dances, right? So for you, if I said okay, we're going to have an hour and a half show. How, there's there's enough material right now to take you on a three hour Come, show. At least so three at, hours least, at least at least. <laughs> so yeah, but, all yeah, we need Michael, is time. The stuff I saw yesterday wouldn't have worked. Well, that was it. Wasn't <laughs> impressive enough. That was a bite, Miles. That yeah, was but a bite. Not, none of everything. it was impressive enough. It has to be more than that. Miles, you're so full of beans. None of it's impressive. Yeah, do, what are you doing? Do you take with? this and actually make something big out of it? Or do you just play around and, you know, do a little lessons do here we, and there? Do you stand and ask this question over and over and over again? Or do what he's talking about is making money and like he thinks you know like his it's really basically we're all subjected to his opinion you know he just has a very distinct kind of harsh personality it comes across as harsh to a lot of people you need to know how to reach the public because you're playing to Mickey Mouse amount of people I'm trying to say that's take this to 10 to 20 30 40 people to Mickey Mouse kind of dancers because those are the kind of dancers that people like you like to 
see up on stage. Oh, nice body, nice tits. How old are they? Cute costume. They're cute now. The tape was quintessential miles. It was a perfect uh, point counterpoint. Um, I have to say that I spent most of my time applauding Suhela's uh, point of view. Now you don't know anything about the art form. You don't know anything about the dance. You shouldn't you need, be judging. You need both. Okay. Um, he, you know he's he's as passionate um, and educated and interested in what he's up to as she is in what she's up to. You need to balance the art, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to balance the art. Well, who's going to balance okay. you? <laughs> Are you going to help me I'm trying to help. Okay, but you've seen and them I'm hoping you, you said you'd find me some, so I'm waiting yes, to see I if said you, I'd find you some, but you should have had me on tour from the beginning. If you're just a mouth, or whether you've actually found me somebody. You mouth? Excuse me, I'm the one that paved the way to your whole Northern California experience. You wouldn't even have gotten into Ricasa if it wasn't for me. Mouth. I don't know what kind of mouth that you're oh, talking okay. about. Yeah, thank you for that. You would thank I, you. I, 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 Pull this thing off, I okay? Hope so I hope, but, I hope you're not just one of those Hollywood talkers, because I'm so sick yeah, and tired of but, your but kind. But the point is, put point your is, money where you your mouth is. You're a troublemaker. I am not. Listen, you should listen to me more often. Me, me, I love that. I have to like deal with you. Well, I'm not going to deal with you. Cut that. Yeah. I better stay in there. Definitely gotta leave that in. I mean, it's, uh, it's, you know, the age old problem we've been running into over and over again, you know, with the girls and, you know, you're thinking when you come into the thing, it's gonna get completely perverted and blown out. The Lollapalooza Tour tool was originally um, started in, in the 90s by Perry Farrell from Jane's Addiction. And for five or six years, uh, he'd go out every year with his band, Jane's Addiction, and take out the kind of latest and hottest alternative bands. Three or four years ago, it stopped. But now they're starting again this year for the first time. Perry Fowler is very much into world music, and, and it was suggested that maybe we can do some dates on the tour. Well, I mean, my wife is a dancer. So to me, I think that dancers in general are the unsung heroes of the art world. So that's why it's kind of exciting us, because it's going to kind of give us so much more audience reach than we've had before. Miles had uh, been very um, forthright and, and excited about getting us together and, and having them come out and do Lollapalooza with us. I think it's going to be a smash. Put your money where your you mouth talk. is. You're a troublemaker. <laughs> And I was trying to explain to her, look, you know, I, don't, I can't play a note of music. Right. But I can tell a song is good because I'm, I'm reacting to it. Right. So as I'm looking at this, I'm looking out there and saying, well, what, which ones do I find myself gravitating to? Well, then, you know. Caron. 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 They are really beautiful. They have a really stunning feminine sensual quality about them. That is, that is very important in this dance. They have yeah. that, you know, feminine sensual quality about them. Well, they definitely worked for me. When I saw that, I thought, okay, but that's a look. Whether just a just right now from this, it's, the, you know, the choreography is Belly Dance 101. It's for Lollapalooza, I could put more emphasis on look than actual talent for the troupe. No. That's, well, well, no, well, uh, for, for my, you no, know what? Because you're yes. saying You're saying the audience is between a, a 15 to 25, average age 20. All of those 20-year-olds watch MTV. They watch J-Lo and Puff. Daddy. Yeah, and they sure. watch the best dancers in the United States. They're going to know the difference of, of a pretty little girl just fluffing around and someone who really well, can yeah, dance. I'm, I'm yeah, talking someone with talent yeah, who, girls, who is 18. I'm talking about are just fluffing around. Because every time I talk to you, you're saying they've got to be ballet, they've got to be this, got to be that. To be on stage? Okay, yes. Yeah. You don't like, you don't want a bunch of girls just throwing, waving oh, a I bunch agree, of scarves. Agree, yeah. And you're asking me as the choreographer to give you something impressive, to give you the wow factor. And this is important. This is important to impress the audience with belly dancing for their first impression, you know, a, a major tour in the United States with belly dancing. And I don't want to do something fluffy with, well, you know, scarf know, waving and, you know. The main thing too is to set up, like like in any Hollywood show or any video, there's, you have an audition and you have a panel and you have a choreographer. And as a choreographer, I will set up the choreography according to the show, what's going to be in the show. Can they handle it?
doing it? We're going to have these come back? We're going to have ask these, these girls, these to, girls stay. to stay. Yeah. Barbara's going to call a few numbers or names. I'm not sure how it's going to be done, but those people will be asked to stay. We'll do a little bit more dancing, and for the rest of you, thank you for coming. So. Okay. Um, number one, Leora Panis, please stay. There's one, there's one who's absolutely amazing, in my opinion. I don't know, but she's in all hot pink. I don't know what number she is. She just, she's got that, got that quality. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with Morgan. When are the first coming from Puerto Rico? Well, I'm gonna, I'll call tomorrow and organize them to come in. What's your name? Yeah, Cassandra. Yeah, she's 13 years old too. Wow. 14, 14, 14, 14 uh, sorry. Right. But I just feel like it would be so hard on these girls at 13 to go out on this tour for Lollapalooza. And, you know, you know what? what if people like make fun of them or something? Say that to Macaulay Culkin, Drew Barrymore. 15 hours a day Yeah, on the Drew set. Barrymore turned out to be a crack addict, and now she's doing great. She's doing know, phenomenally but well. She but she was hot at 14. I'm and she was joking. also on like every drug. <laughs> <laughs> You're an ass. <laughs> the girl in the pink has no dance training. She's great by herself, but. No. What? Just Cassandra? Yeah. Cassandra Woodburn. Thank you. I'm nervous. I'm surprised I got it. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very difficult time. I think learning choreography, I do my best, and um, I'm more improvisational, I think, than I am anything else. You came all the way for this? Yeah. That's great, okay. Thank you. No, I thought you were really good. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, all the way from Birmingham, Alabama. Now she's on her way. Now she's on her way back. So, we'll see. We'll see. Also, I don't know if we want to explore this angle, but I've gotten a few emails from men, you know, saying how it's not just gender specific just for women. Well, we actually fi filmed two guys so far. <laughs> we had this guy that I first thought was a woman. Huge, you know, big red dress, danced up a storm, I mean, occupied the room like an elephant would have, you know, you're going, what's that? And at the very end, she rips off her wig and it's a bald-headed guy, you know. It's two different spirits. Because when I'm dancing as myself, it's a masculine man communicating one energy. When it's Lady Kai, it's a complete water spirit, something that tries to infect people, almost like a virus. The misconception about this dance is that it is something feminine. It's a folk dance, everybody does it. The movement vocabulary is the same whether you're a man or a woman. Puerto Ricans dance salsa, Dominicans dance merengue, Brazilians dance samba. This is just one of the many dances in the Middle East. For example, in reggae, a basic move would be like, you know, like this. In Calypso, it's like this. In Oriental dance, it's this. It's the same movement. See, so we have people in here that are not just pretty girls here. You know, we've got guys. In a documentary. Yeah. Right now, the belly dance community is looking at us as we are disgusting for what we're doing. But right now, what they think is it's going to be a big strip, you know, strip show. And the thing is, is that if who we thinks that? I haven't seen anything. Well, the belly dance community. Did, like, you know, that the Desert Rose website said, you know, the young, whatever it said, young, beautiful, beautiful flawless. flawless. We put out a word out that we're looking for some younger girls. Okay, well, that offended a lot of the people in the belly dance community, and they. They assumed that that's all we were looking for. When we shot this video, age was really not a consideration. Matter of fact, we didn't have any young girls in it, really, you know, because we were looking for the top dancers. This DVD is, is I think, a tribute to, you know, the art of belly dance. We, we've got the best dancers in America. Yeah! The most important thing is what? 
<laughs> I don't care about those things. I mean, I'm sticking around because just when I lose hope in him, he shows me this really like large picture of like his goals and I go, oh, maybe there's hope. So I get a call from a promoter friend of mine, Matt Taylor, who has this wild idea of doing a big show that's going to be televised around the world. And uh, he wanted me to help him get a lot of rock bands to do the show. And I said, well, I'd help. But, you know, I got this belly dance project I'm really working on. And if you could fit them in, then it'd be worth my while to help you with your show. And he said, hey, sounds good. Let's go for it. I thought, you know what? Let's use it as a training ground, a little proving ground. So here I am headed off the airport with fingers crossed. Here we are after 11 hours flying yesterday from Los Angeles to Tokyo with, with eight belly dancers. And now we're about to fly from Tokyo to Jakarta, changed, which is about seven hours. Then, then we're going to change planes and go to Bali. And uh, all for this big concert. I got, you know, four weeks away from the start of Lollapalooza. You know, we got so much so much at risk at the Lollapalooza tour. This, you know, yesterday morning I got up thinking, why am I doing this off to Bali to do a concert? You had SARS, you have the terrorism in Bali, you have all of this stuff going on in the world, you know, and orange alerts, the yellow alerts. Trying to get anybody on a plane is a real problem, which is why this, the state of Bali is supporting this event. We had problems at the airport, visas, wrong passport, whatever. But anyway, we're all here, and uh, the entourage is intact and in reasonably good spirits, so. I'm just hoping for the best. They haven't really told us much. The only thing I know for sure that we're doing is we're dancing to one song with Hakim's orchestra, which I prepared um, like a little medley of Hakim songs. I'm expecting chaos. <laughs> because we don't really know what we're doing <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're on our way. I got the idea to do the World Peace Music Awards actually uh, after I came to Bali, after the bomb. I realized that the media wasn't giving Bali any attention for their peaceful response. After the bomb, the reaction by the people was really humbling to me. And unless there's drama, and unless there's attacks and retaliation and anger and vengeance, then it doesn't get any coverage. So we thought, it's about time that we have a peace award. It's not necessarily just songs of peace either. It, it encapsulates all of what makes peace through music. Last night, yesterday, when, when we arrived at the airport, I noticed the you know when the cameras are stuck in your face. What's what's going to happen basically is in, in, in many ways you guys are going to be the spokesman for belly dance to a level which has probably never been reached before. When that camera is stuck in your face, it's your opportunity to put forward what you want to say. You don't really care what they want to say or what they want to get out of you. The important thing to you is your particular message. What, what, what would be the message you'd want to have people hear? That it's an art form and we work hard for it. And I just want people to appreciate it like they would a ballet dancer, you know, when watching a beautiful piece on a big stage in a theater. You know, I don't want it to be like degraded just because it's in a nightclub or, you know, people get the wrong impression. Like, well, I don't want that anymore. Granted, this is good for women and all of that stuff, but bottom line is it's entertaining and that's why we're doing it. Right. And the fact that more than half our job is just being attractive and that we are objectified both by men and women, are those things we we should kind of just ignore. That's how so, well, well, well ask, I, I'd ask this question. It, it's What's true. wrong and, and why and shouldn't a woman be allowed to be yeah. sexual? That's, belly dancing is definitely sexual. I mean, I... That's right. I, I, a lot of people try to deny that. But to me, it's not sexual. It's, it's, it's sexual. Sexual. feminine. It's expressive. Yeah, right, right, and, right. and you would do it also in, in Balinesian dance. You would do something exactly. with the hands. And I don't think that people are going to look at it and say, well, it's sexual. So it's so much more. But there's a lot of 
torso and hip movements yeah. that this is this is the area of what's going yeah, on. So exactly. maybe the things that we call raunchy or degrading are actually not part of sexuality but more part of violence actually. Maybe. So if we could separate the, the language, if we get the language straight, then maybe we could realize that you know there's nothing wrong with being completely sexual and being sexual in the dance and that that's a positive thing. But that you know so much violence is somehow included in sexuality in the press and in, in most other Yeah things. but it's it's also Part of our response, I feel, it's part of my responsibility as the belly dancer and someone who's trained in this art form to educate my audience that it is not like stripping and there is a difference between like stripping. Because there is a difference, because I don't yeah. take my clothes off. Yeah, yeah, so why, why, but why is taking your clothes off a negative thing? I think it would be um, insulting to the culture, to Middle Eastern culture. To, well, that brings to, up an interesting that. point because yeah. I, I I learned, uh, as you know from mom, <laughs> the, the belly dancing um, as kind of an American art form from the 60s and mm -hmm. 70s. It, for me, it was always called belly dance. Right. And um, it was always from sort of a liberation of female sexuality standpoint rather than a, um, archive a particular um, art form from another country. As a folk dance, the purpose of this dance is to express joy. That can be distorted by any performer's intent. You can take any dance form and do it as something beautiful or do it as something to make the seats wet. We don't live in a society where people don't take note of other people's sexuality. I mean, I'm in a very conservative world, a very conservative city, and don't kid yourself that it plays a role. Sometimes you have to recognize that your strength is somebody else's weakness. And if, if I'm dealing with a guy who doesn't have his sexuality in check, and he is more easily charmed than the next guy, it would be foolish for me not to recognize that as leverage, just like his colleague would use the fact that his dad went to Harvard, his, their fathers went to Harvard together. I mean, it's no different in our society, and, I, and I, I, shouldn't, I don't think people should be ashamed, and I don't think it is a statement on the advancement of women. So we just found out Hakeem's not coming because there was a problem with the flights to get him back to um, Cairo, as that was one of the main things they were doing, where he was um, dancing with Hakeem. Hakeem is not making it. So now it looks like we'll dance to his music, but I need to make sure that's slotted in the show and all that, so we just need to find the promoter. Production so, with this thing, I'm on the outside. But yeah, after go. the spins, I come back here at the end. Okay. So, you go. Do like a double. Yeah. Uh, the belly dancers will be down here with DJ Ro John Robinson and E. Newell. He's, he's like, All right. he's well, they have choreographed pieces. We have, they can dance the CD. So why not have to give them a slot that they do their thing? I mean, where Hakeem was going to go, you put them doing so they have, you have a choreographed piece that's set for TV with all eight dancers. Hmm. Then you've got that whole piece done. Then they fill in doing something with the DJ and then something with Zohar. Then we're fine. Okay, at this point, I don't really have anywhere to cut to give them their own five minute spot. Because five minutes is a lot. I need one sequence for the belly dancers, which let's just art for art. Just how many say it's five minutes, that's their show. Then they'll they'll come in and drop in on this, they can drop okay. in on this and drop in whatever else. That's but they fine. need one piece that that's is their fine. bit. That's why I'm that's doing fine. this show, because I get that footage. Okay. So I don't want these girls to fly all the way here and I do nothing. I need no. something to uh, It's not happening, okay? This is a clusterfuck waiting to happen. <laughs> well, thanks for the confidence. Look at him snicker. You hear that? What a sound that makes. <laughs>
You can't put the group on stage without choreography. Because what they're doing you know, now, they're going, it's like it's what our, they're going it's down, like what they're going down now, we're going down and like, cutting yeah. groups, they're dropping songs. Yeah. Because what he did is he's got, they got too many. Right. So, you know, it is what it is. Okay. It's frustrating. It's like we rehearsed for a lot of other things and the time keeps getting cut and you can't present something like at the level you want to with the amount of time and so apparently one other girl that wants to do something. And just improvising. So it needs, you know, it needs to be re rehearsed and prepared. And What are they doing in screening people as they come in? Anything? We have 16 metal detectors. So they got metal detectors. And wands. So you're the, you have all the security guys. He's, yeah. he's intelligence. So all of his guys are playing My father was CIA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His father is very famous. He, his father began the CIA. The CIA. Yeah, starter. The first one. Yeah, the CIA. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, this is very important. Evacuation. If we have emergency evacuation. The people, we want them to exit this way. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Not this way. We want them to go this way. Yeah. So his, his artist is very beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so perimeter two. Artistic. Yeah. Anyway, they spent the next half an hour going through evacuations if there's a bomb scare, where the audience comes in, where they go out, just on and on. I'm sitting here going, you know, like, it's all important. Well, that, but that, that's how we arrived to it. Jeez. Yeah. Sorry, girl. That's scary. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for terrifying us. Yeah, for me. for me. Yeah. I didn't have enough things to worry about. <laughs> Remember your choreography and watch for bombs. Well, when I was talking about taking risks, I, I, I was only, you know, talking uh, creatively. I wasn't really yeah, talking about taking your lives in your own hands. Thought you were talking uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. When I danced at restaurants years ago, there was quite a few young men there, and I was astounded to find out that I had seen one that had been in the 9-11 thing, Muhammad Atta. I had met him, he was just quiet, one of the guys, and it did frighten me. I got virtually sick. I almost couldn't teach that night, and, and I didn't think anybody would even show up. I mean, who could continue with life after something like that, you know? Um, and I went to class. Every woman that came to class said, well, I couldn't imagine not dancing, and I couldn't imagine not... Um, doing what I love because in these times you realize life is so precious and so short that you have to grab every little moment. My class is tripled. <laughs> Well, the music combines, Zohar combines Jewish and Arab music samples with dance, uh, textures, ambient. And uh, when we go live, we use different singers according to, you know, um, what we need. And, you know, we'd like to combine those influences. And on our album, we have a whole bunch of different singers anyway. The whole reason I'd be here, because for peace peace for the whole world and I hope people will get the message and we will love to come back and uh, probably with my full band as well, Abdel Kader Sadon from the UK, number one right band in Britain. And Abdel Kader Sadon from Abdel Kader Sadon band. No, 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 you don't do that. You're not here to come. It's not right. That's okay. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but if you want to go next to with me, yes. So the singer Zohar just quit. Oh my God. What did he quit? He just quit. No, he's not going to do the concert. So the, the, the only act that we were going to dance with. What's wrong with him? They had a fight with uh, What's wrong the, with him? the other musicians. 
And it, the, the saddest part about it was like he was a, he's an Arabic guy and the musicians were uh, Jewish. What? So it was like really like a cool thing, kind of bringing everything together. But once so again, we don't have peace in the Middle East. <laughs> And I would love to come with my band, but they can always, people can visit my website, which is www.saadun.com. I'll give you a copy of my CD so you can check it out. So, hey, why don't we just do an Irish jig with the Irish band? <laughs> well, I have to say, belly dancers make me uh, have, a, have a huge effect on my, uh, on my guitar playing. Uh, it's been amazing. I, I keep hitching rides in their bus. I don't think Miles has noticed it. Like a catwalk type of thing. So you'd walk out in front of that. So you'd be right in front of the audience. Well, I think there was a little bit of uh, embarrassment. Uh, the Zohar manager sort of offended our singer from Algeria, but uh, he kind of cooled down. And it now seems that uh, Aaron from uh, Aaron and Andy from Zohar actually talked to him, and uh, it's all cooled down now. So actually, he's going to go sing, which is great. Peace for the whole world. I think when the dance has come on, there's a, much, there's a much bigger chance of world peace happening. Please promote this agent. Book us. Go on and come back. <laughs> yeah. You You're are watching, watching SCTV with, with the, the Belly Dance, Dance Superstars. Island of utopian coexistence between man and nature in the nation of Indonesia whose spices first drew us around the world to discover we are one with all life bound together on the same journey around the Sun welcome to the next three hours of celebrating we are alive together here and now I'm Lawrence Blair may the music begin introduce one of the most distinguished rock and roll managers in the business, Mr. Miles Copeland. of all that, my bra pops. I can't get it through the material. Okay. Casey had to just start. Salam, salam, salam alaykum, yeah. So everything we had planned was out the window. I had this moment of panic, like what to do, what to do, and Emma just said, get out there. And so I just had to look really relaxed, like I planned the whole thing. It was very stressful, it was very stressful. And then once I got up on the stage, I was so emotional I wanted to actually cry representing my art form that I have fought so hard to represent since I was 13 years old. And for a good cause, I'm representing it for peace. So what more can I ask for? Two, two, three, two. 
three. Everyone else has done three, two four songs. songs. They cut everybody from the point of view. It's two songs. That's all it is. And they're like, well, we want to do our three songs. They're like, no, we agreed on two. They're like, well, we're canceling the other belly dancers. We don't want them on the stage. Can they say why they didn't want us to go on with them? The manager's a total asshole. And then they right, went right into their third song. I grab Miles, I go, can I go, can I go? Can I go? Their third song, can I go? And he looks at me and he kind of looks around, you know how he, he gets the, the, the wheel starts turning and he darts across the stage, he comes like, get on the stage! <laughs> you know, and then I think Sony was there just kind of, you know, over there, so I was like, come on. I kind of yelled and we just ran out on the stage. Manager just did the third song, so I said, fuck it, well, I'm putting the belly dancers on then. Yeah. The prick. Miles he was us. so there. Miles is incredible. He, he was really, amazing. Yeah. From, like you he said, was, bag carrying. I thought it was very sincere um, when we were just about to go on and we see all the equipment and we tell Miles immediately that it has, something has to be done, and he did his best. And you can see that he was trying his best. It was. It was very clear that it was important to him, not just professionally, but personally. Uh -huh. Wow, Miles was really behind us. There's still a lot of stuff that could have been worked out in terms of presenting us in the right light. They were ready for us. They wanted to see us as a main feature of, of, of the whole concert. Um, yet somehow they were still like kind of tuning their music behind us and moving equipment. You know, oh, let's just get them on and off. Yeah, it was still there. They, they weren't. They didn't there. give us rehearsal time, and they barely wanted. They didn't even want to give us the whole stage when they were supposed to. But I think we all, you know, showed and proved to them that people people enjoyed it. After we were sort of told, okay, that's that's about it for belly dancing for the night, uh, the girls all went and got, you know, I was a bit worried they were, you know, a little disappointed. And uh, they went and all got changed, and uh, we came back out to watch In Excess. Thank you very much! Come on, man. Uh... They came out to me and says, look, how would they like to go dance on, you know, on, on, on uh, one of the songs out in front there? We got some girls over here who want to dance. So we went over there and said, you guys want to get out and dance out in the front? They all went, come on, man. We find out that we're going to be out there with them, performing, just dancing, just having in a good time. In our regular street Yeah, in our regular, clothes, exactly. Yeah, that having was Having a good really old fun. time, barefoot, dancing on stage with a rock star. Thank you, ladies. I learned a lot here about really the kind of people that I'm dealing with. Because at the end of the day, it's it's those people that you know, it's the people themselves, the artists themselves, the people walking on stage that you have to depend on to pull it off. You know, I'm not on stage, and they all they all came through. It was really great. It was really, I was proud of them. The buzz in the street is major. Uh, there's no question about it. It's the best international pop concert they've had here so far from anybody on the island. They've never seen such a collection of international stars in one place in Indonesia, let alone in Bali. We aim to please. <laughs> when I got back from Bali, I had a conversation with uh, my accountant in London telling him, you know, that it actually worked out okay. He said, well, you know, that's great, but you got to cancel the Lollapalooza tour. You can't afford it. But I've already filmed the Jelena DVD. We've shot a Superstars DVD. And Lollapalooza is in a way, is we, we're setting everything up on Lollapalooza to make these things have a value. So if I cancel Lollapalooza, those DVDs don't have a value. So 
in a sense, I have to do it. We just started rehearsals about a week ago, so like the day after we came back from Bali, so some of us were still recovering. Basically, like the Desert Roses is the dance company, and we've been, or the ARC 21 has been auditioning dancers from all over the United States, and even um, had two girls fly out from Puerto Rico. And they are like the, the dance company. And it's been tough. Some of the girls don't have a strong dance background, um, but as the director, I, it wasn't always my choice to choose who's in the show. And then you have the belly dance superstars, which are the soloists who are also a dance company. There's a different dynamics because they're all used to dancing as soloists. And now all of a sudden we're a group and it can be kind of frustrating. So I think probably Ansu is having the hardest time with it. One of the issues that we discussed was that there are a lot of uh, dancers who lead their own troops that are already star dancers that are used to being directors themselves coming together and now we're in the situation of being directed. The last part, <laughs> Plus we're doing a lot of her style which is unusual for us too. A lot of people have completely you know different styles than Jelena so we're trying to adjust to to doing representing ourselves in a completely different style from what we're used to so that's that's interesting as well. <laughs> uh, the different styles of belly dance, the modern Egyptian, had a big influence in the, in the 40s and 50s from our American movies. Actually, in Egypt, they were influenced by these movies. So it has a lot of sparkly costumes, a lot of uh, beading, um, stuff that you see in Vegas. The dynamics of, of Vegas has been drawn into belly dancing through the Egyptian style now, and then, of course, in cabaret, you can draw that in also. I learned to belly dance from my American mother. She was a pioneer of cabaret style, American style belly dance in the 60s and 70s. I like cabaret style because it's a, it's a great um, genre in which to pull from all the different places. You can even do fusion with Spanish and um, Indian style dance, which works for me too, so it's very eclectic. The belly dance style that I do is tribal belly dance. Cabaret is much more dramatic and airy, and tribal is very, very earthy and grounded and snake-like. I was cabaret for 10 years before I was tribal, so all the stuff that you see with the drum solo, the pops and the locks and all that, that's uh, pretty, I think, I don't know for sure, but that's, I think that was originated by Suhaila Salampur. I'd call it tribal fusion because it's not strictly tribal. Fusing in classical Indian dance, flamenco dance, there's a lot of hip hop happening, a lot of sort of club style belly dance, so the dance form is changing. The problem is now that a lot of these things where you get the choreographers who aren't Middle Eastern dancers, is they're putting jazz, they're putting Farsi, they're putting modern, they're putting Indian. <laughs> was and is a folk dance. Duh. I think the show's looking hot, so that's the important part. And I, I, I myself told Jelena that I'm totally behind it. I'm in it, I'm doing it, I'm excited. We're only working with 12 minutes, so that's a tough job. Try to get everybody's ego fit into 12 minutes is probably kind of hard. <laughs> we lost two girls because they're, the underage thing looks like it was a problem. So much for young girls. One of the girls from Miami who's 17 didn't have a work permit. And then there was like a budget issue. So it was like that kind of, okay, well, she got sent home. So that was really tough. And the other girl, Cassandra, who auditioned here, who's 14 years old, there's some issues of which states which laws apply to her and there's all these other legal issues that they're dealing with so she may or may not go at this point we don't know yeah it's going really good all the girls are really nice to me i'm the little baby of the group so yeah it's fun you know at 14 we've all decided that you know that's just too young rock and rollers out there <laughs> So I keep having to change the lines and the choreography and we're like less than a week away and it's we're all, you know, quite nervous about it. We're gonna be out there for eight, nine weeks, and we better make sure as a company that we can actually fund this. And a lot of it's gonna be down to our merchandising and making sure these additional gigs we make money. At the police concerts, when we were playing stadiums, the, the, the merchandise, the guy who did the merchandise, Miles had them made sure that they would wear um, overalls with no pockets. 
So these, all this money's flying in, the money goes into these trash cans, and so on the plane we'd have these bags of cash, which we'd be throwing into the air, this green cloud of money. This is how we used to kind of sober up after the show. When I went to Cairo Carnival, I took a look at all the stuff that was selling. And um, one of the things I saw was these little bead bags. So I thought, hmm, I asked the woman, where do these come from? She said, Bali. And I said, uh-huh. So when I went to Bali, when I had the first day off, I rushed off down to one of these little marketplaces and bought a bunch of these little bee tags. 70? Yeah. 65? Five. And uh, so I had to bring, bring them back to see if they sell in Lollapalooza, you know. It, there's something really interesting about you buy something for $5 and you sell it for $15 and there's the cash. <laughs> and you get the cash. So, now that's the exactly interesting thing for you, Miles. Exactly. That's the problem. And, and it's yeah. not yeah. yes. uh, 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 cash. Yeah. And you begin to see. You see it. It's like when you're selling CDs at the gig. A guy comes along and he, he takes the Belly Dance Superstar CD and gives you 15 bucks. All of a sudden, that CD has a like a reality to it. There's a, you know, it's worth something. Holy shit, you know. But that's that's what it is. And if you do enough of that, then you pay for the goddamn tour. Um, by the way, when do the Motorola the Motorola phones arrive Monday? Yeah, right? they're, they're going to go see the girls on Monday. And they train them on the phones. It works. Well, the Capizio shoes arrived today, and only I think only Rachel and Ensuya don't want to wear shoes. It's their act. Uh, Japanese man was filling up his tub and slitting his own throat. So that was pretty dramatic. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, Amy came to pick us up in a stolen car. By coincidence, the key opened the door and it also started the car. And then Amy realized that she had just just stolen a car. <laughs> And this morning, Miles' credit card was completely stuck inside the American Express machine. And they're there with scissors going like this, and he's banging on the machine. And then, and then this. Well, first sort of the bus. I will drive the way that I have my hat, you know. I guess it's not metaphoric for my psychology. It's amazing how in the end things actually happen. Whereas all along the way, it's like everything's set up to prevent it happening, but somehow it happens. Day. Uh, merchandising tent. Yeah, right here. I think maybe in a former life he worked at a bazaar in Baghdad, maybe as a, uh, a you know, jolly swag man. Strange guy. He's a strange, strange guy. I talked to all the vendors, apparently a really bad day for everybody. So I hang out and sell a few hundred bucks. Because like, we have them like set in the wings. So the other problem is the band.
I was fine. I thought I was going to be throwing up. Oh, we did it. <laughs> we got finally on the main stage. We did it. We got on stage. The audience was into it. At first they were like, Whoo! And at the end they were like, they were really into it. Whew. I know, this they is, don't listen. This is our glamorous, very glamorous, superstar <laughs> dressing room. Behind this beautiful stadium we have to change in our bus. I don't want a dressing room, no. <laughs> change in the bus. I want to show my booty to all the rock stars changing in the bus. I don't want a dressing room. Like had broken glass on it, and like the carpet was all ratted up. And it was freaking so heaven. It was yeah. heaven. <laughs> it was bliss. It was, it was it. like my but favorite, we had favorite the most venue ever. In my opinion, uh, dance uh, and especially you know high art forms are supposed to be in beautiful out big theaters, you know, like this. I I, I don't think that um, you would have <laughs> you know like high modern or high ballet like in a um, you know you know Harry Marys on the Monday night, you know, on the uh, punk club in Ohio. You know what I'm saying? I know you miss me. I do. I know you do, and I know that when you're not around me, you're wondering, why didn't I just hire Suhaila all the time? Because you're up there and you give me a hard time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the awesome part was the audience. They had this group of belly dancers that just scream and cheered the whole time and screamed for an encore at the end. Like a and like shock when we first got there, but <laughs> we walked there, little world. Where were we? Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> you know, I thought it was in Kentucky. They got kind of offended. We're a, a little bit addicted to each other. You know, we consider ourselves a unit. We do it two times a day. <laughs> and station work out. And, and McDonald's work out too. Do you take work out Jelena, you know, her and I have disagreed on some things, but I went to her and I said that uh, our disagreements are kind of part of the beauty of this whole thing to me now. Um, and I love her on so many levels, just like, you know, socially and, uh, uh, you know, she's incredibly fun. Oh, <laughs> that's our jam, dude. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like we forget that we're around other people. If anyone believes in reincarnation, I think we have, you know, like been together for past lives. And this is like a, you know, like a gypsy troop who, you know, have an encounter in this existence. So what else, Miles, what else are you doing to shake the nation? Tell me. Because I have to hear about it through the grapevine since, you know, well, you, you don't you tell anybody. Well, you scheduling to meet me, but you never show up. But Miles, Things I kind of need buzzing. you to respect me. Yeah. Respect you? <laughs> I'm like such an asshole. I'll, you, I'll I respect need you. Respect you. Me. I'll respect you when you respect me. How about that? <gasps> but I do, because I You told me I don't know what I'm talking about. But you don't. That's respect. I'm being honest with you. Do you want me to be like, Miles, you're so, you just know everything. And you're so fabulous. Then, then you'd look at me and go, hmm. Then, I, then I'd respect you. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, oh God. We decided that um, we needed to change, move offices because our overheads. I mean, we we've had to adjust for the fact that the record business has lost 30 percent of its, you know, the basic business. The bottle Palooza was not profitable. It was a promotion. 
it was like buying an ad in a magazine. It informed everybody what we were up to. Now we actually have to have somebody respond to that ad and start paying something for it. Another thing in the Betty Dance business. Thank you very much. This is it. This is the night you guys have worked so hard. I love all of you. I'm so proud of you. I can't even look at you. And just remember, you you know the show and the, and the, you dedicated. Oh shit. <laughs> It's not just a show. It's representing who you are as a woman. Okay, so start your vibration. <laughs> wanted to do my whole life. I'm blissed out. I thought that I would feel weaker on the road, but I think the joy of what I'm doing, I feel strong as an ox right now. I feel so good. We've created something that people are now interested in and the, uh, the world is looking at us in a sense. Now we have to start bringing that home to make it actually a real business which is profitable. There's that whole battle of art versus um, business versus what's marketable. You know, it was really significant for my girls and for, um, I think, the belly dance community because it was a uh, belly dance produced event. You know, artists for artists by artists. I didn't compromise at all. Hey, welcome back to Select on MTV. It is my pleasure to introduce these girls to you, the belly dance superstars and the Desert Roses. I understand you all performed with uh, the Wall of Palooza. Yeah, we were on tour last summer for two months. It's a professional touring company that will have your eyes transfixed. They have been traveling to 60 cities in the United States and Canada. We're on a tour right now promoting our new instructional videos and DVDs. The recorded music is obviously available from Art 21. That's our producer, Miles Copeland. They're the best in America. I went all over the country looking for the best dancers. I called every, every teacher said, look, I want to know the best people you know of. The movements are very empowering. The, the movements are not very objectified. They're very much about women being proud of their bodies. Instructional belly dance with Jelena and belly dance jam by Belly Queen. It's the only dance art that was invented by women for women. But men like it too. <laughs> and that's and why that, so That's the hook. Dancing. We've actually taken the sort of little, you know, niche business of, of belly dance and actually made it into something where now the vision of where you could go with this thing is, is, is actually more focused and clear. I think we saw a big shift uh, in people that actually realized that we, particularly when they saw our troupe and saw that the girls were really good, and this wasn't just about young girls, um, this was really something exceptionally good. is the world's first professional touring belly dance troupe. This is the last show of 60 shows in 58 cities across the United States. And I'm very proud of them. They pulled it off. Ladies and gentlemen, the dance sensation that has been sweeping the nation, the Desert Roses, and the belly dance
I don't know. Let's just hope. I'm just hoping. But he does scare me. Il